Hello, Pokemon fans. I'm Josh J. Witt Wittenkeller here alongside Kyle Pukasukovic. We are here. This is the final trading card game for the U.S. National Championships 2014. We've got ourselves the Masters, Michael Pramawat versus Brandon Salazar. These guys survived two days of grueling competition, 15 Swiss rounds, then multiple single elimination knockout rounds, and here we are, down to two players. We got rid of over 800 players, and now we're just left with two, Michael Pramawat and Brandon Salazar. Looks like we're gonna take a look at Michael's player card first. He is one of the most established players in this game, arguably one of the best players in the world. Of course, he was a runner-up at the 2010 World Championship, a three-time regional champion. He was a state champion this year. He has won countless tournaments, definitely has the most experience in this matchup. And we definitely have ourselves a sort of master versus apprentice battle because here we have Brandon Salazar, relatively new. He qualified in Worlds in 13 and 014, 014. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, has some decent regional appearances, but he is just a much, much fresher face to the game. In fact, if looking at both these players, Michael Primawant is a decade older than Brandon Salazar. Wow, so that just shows how long this community has gone. That's crazy to think about. I think this matchup is almost a complete contrast in every single way. We have the old established veteran against the young gun coming up his first year in Masters, and also the decks are almost completely different. Michaels is very straightforward. It's almost just Pyroar, and then one Charizard and one Mewtwo. That's literally it. Just that's, 10 that's Pokemon. <laughs> and then you look at Brandon's deck, and there's just a whole slew of Pokemon. Landorus EX, Mewtwo EX, Raichu, Garbodor, Drudagon. So he has all these options, whereas Pram's just going for this one simple strategy, and we'll see which one comes out on top. It should be very interesting. With Pyroar, you've got Michael Pramila. He's sort of running that meta counter deck. He's trying to take out all of these big, cheap EX Pokemon. But you look over at Brandon's, he's using a lot of those EXs, but he also has a lot of cards dedicated as a counter counter. He wants to try and find ways to get rid of Pyroar, either through Garbodor or knocking it out with a Raichu. So it should be an interesting fight. Yeah. Uh Another thing to look at is just the contrast in risky cards, but we'll get to that in a second. Looks like we're getting over to the stage introduction right now. Oh, looks like we're going to take a second. Sorry about oh, that. Yeah, but yes, if you look at Michael Pramwatt's list, we see cards like Roller Skates and Pokemon Catcher. It's going to be a ton of coin flips. Yeah, he definitely loves his flips. I talked to Pramwatt before the game. A lot of these fire-based lists are using that new Flaming Torch card. I asked him, he's like, you know, I like holding on to my energy. Why not just flip a lot of coins with roller skates? <laughs> it's all about transportation, roller skates, bicycles. He wants to draw a lot of cards without having to use a supporter for the turn. Yeah, I, I've known him for a long time. The man loves to flip his coins, and he's done it all the way here. Gotten all the way to the finals. We'll see if his luck's going to run out or if he'll become the new national champion. It should be a close one. Both players still getting ready, but should be starting soon. Cannot wait to see how this goes down. It is really just a classic clash between Old player, new player, Michael Premwatt. Can he survive a big event? He's gotten second at Worlds once. He definitely does not want to get second again here. Brandon, can he steal the title? I know, we'll have to see. Looks like we're going to throw it over to the stage right now. How's everyone doing? We are here, the final Masters. To my right, Michael Premwatt. And let's hear it to my left for Brandon Salazar. All right, gentlemen, are you guys ready? All right, let's have a good match. Let's go. All right, and we are underway. Both these players setting down, getting ready to set up. They'll be easy to identify uh, if perhaps by coincidence, both players are color coordinated with their sleeves. Michael Bramo will be on the left, red sleeves, red shirt. And on the right, Brandon Salazar, blue, blue. I mean, this is even more of a contrast. They're even wearing red shirts <laughs> and blue shirts. This is an extreme opposite, just both sides. I'm excited to see which one's going to come out on top. Pram is actually wearing be. his red shirt to represent his Pyroar as well, so here we go. <laughs> well, speaking of Pyroar, he actually, in his hand, he's got the Lit Leo and Charizard in his hand. Pretty crazy, considering that he runs just six basic Pokemon in his whole deck. Hey, I mean, you have to start with a basic Pokemon in order to start the game. And, you know, like you said, he only has six basic Pokemon. A lot of the times he is going to Mulligan, but he somehow starts with two of them. Looks like already the finals are going pretty well for Michael Fremont. Can't argue with that at all. Brandon, on the other hand, he's got three basics, but a little more expected. He runs almost all basic Pokemon, aside from a handful of evolutions. And we are ready to go underway. Lit Leo, Pyroar, Charizard, and Mewtwo against a whole slew of opponents based around Landorus EX. 
Now, before we start, who do you think is actually the favorite in this matchup? We did see Brandon overcome a Pyro deck earlier in this tournament. Do you think he can do it again? You know, just looking at the matchup on paper, and that's always just one factor in these tournaments, it seems like Brandon runs enough counters where he's not going to get steamrolled by Pyro. I know that's how Pramawat has won a lot of his matches, because it's so strong against the metagame. But he does have, he's got the Garbodor, he's got the Raichu, he has an, even the Landorus. By using that Hammerhead attack, you can get early pressure on the Litleos. So he has a lot of outs. That said, knowing Pramawat for a long time, he is an excellent tactical player. I'm sure he's tested a lot of these matchups. It should be very, very close. Absolutely. Pramlet is has proven himself to be one of the best players in the game time and time again. Of course, winning both a regional championship and a state championship in this season. And that's exactly. really much of what he's played in. He hasn't even played that much this season outside of those few big events. But when he shows up, he shows up big. Absolutely. Uh, he is just trying to use that pyro with that intimidating main ability to just say, you know what, most decks revolve around those big basic Pokemon EX. And that intimidating main ability makes it so that those uh, basic Pokemon cannot damage Pyroar at all. So his goal is going to be get rid of those evolution cards, Garbodor and Raichu, and just leave it down to those basic Pokemon. That way, Brandon can't do anything. Right, and that's why he runs so many cards like Pokemon Catcher. Normally, an extremely powerful card. Back in the day, it used to be Lysander, but not a supporter. Thankfully, the creators of the game realized that was just a little too powerful. Thanks. So now, <laughs> thank you. It requires a coin flip now, but when he runs four, you can hit enough flips. He runs Lysander as well. He knows. He needs to pull up those counters immediately, and that is going to be his game plan. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're Brandon, you're just trying to get that Garbodor up, get that Garbotoxin ability to take away Pyro's ability so that your basic Pokemon can start attacking once again. It looks like we're starting off, and Brandon will be going first. And speak of the devil, he does have that Trubbish there on the bench. You definitely want to start with that when it comes to a deck that is built around an ability that just stops you in your tracks. Absolutely. We do see him begin with that Computer Search. We see a lot of players opting to play Dowsing Machine instead, but Computer Search allows him to search for any card, and this is going to be great here because he'll be able to probably search for a support order card to smooth out his opening turn. Right. Computer Search being an A-spec card, you can only have one of those in your deck of any A-spec. So you really have to be careful what you're choosing. Both these players have actually opted for the Computer Search. And it's interesting, like you said, Dowsing Machine had a pretty heavy hold on the format. But I'm seeing a lot of players actually going to go for Computer. They want that early game push in such a fast format instead of maybe a late game reliever. Absolutely. Now, another contrast we do see in the deck list, once again, Michael Framlin opting for some higher risk with those Pokemon catcher, playing four of them. Whereas Brandon just opting to play two Lysander, the assured effect. You know, there's no coin flip there. But Pram also does play those two Lysanders, so we're going to see a lot of switching effects in this matchup. <laughs> yeah, if all things went his way, he could get six separate pull-up effects. Uh, now, with EX Pokemon giving up two prizes at once, he certainly does not need that all the time. But it's definitely a great option to have. Yeah, and I think another major player in this matchup would be that Hypnotoxic Laser. We've seen it time and time again. Even though those basic Pokemon can't hurt Pyro if it gets down to a situation where it's just Pyro versus basics, you can still poison it with that Hypnotoxic Laser and deal with it that way. Right. And so, so far, just looking at Brandon Sellers, I set up, it's definitely solid. He has that opening hammerhead, so you can put pressure on Lit Leo immediately, and Primawat can't evolve on the first turn. So he might just be giving himself up uh, a prize there on the bench. Well, fortunately for Pram, Brandon is going first, so he won't be able to attack. Oh, they changed the, the rules change, again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the rule change will allow Pram to have a little bit of pressure here. So thankfully, once again, that was a great rule change to make it so. Uh, things like Landorus can't hit you for 50 going first. So here we see the first of those Pokemon catchers. He likes to flip, and it's heads. In the Pokemon trading card game, when you use dice, we go evens for heads, tails are odds. And so he just pulls up that Trubbish immediately. He knows that Garbodor cannot see the light of day right. if he wants to get through with this Pyroar block. It looks like he was just going to play a Professor Juniper anyway and discard his hand, so may as well just try to play that Pokemon catcher. Bring up that Trubbish, which does have a two retreat cost, and force Brandon to have some way to bring it to the bench. And Brandon does run a lot of different cards to switch out, things like Floatstone and to switch, but, you know, you can't always reliably get them. He's got the switch in hand, but even by getting enough pull-ups, you can just run your opponent out of switch options, leave them stuck with an undesirable Pokemon. Yeah, we've seen that happen plenty of times. Now we do see a level ball for Michael. That means he'll be able to search for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less, which is going to be a Litleo. He's going to take this opportunity to search through his deck and see, are there any crucial cards in my six prizes that I won't have access to right now? And then he's probably just going to take the Litleo. Yeah, Premawat, certainly a tactical player. He's going to use that first search very carefully. And just playing him enough, I know, with enough searches, he can learn all of those six prize cards just by fanning through his deck a few times. A very intelligent player. 
And like you said, go in for another Litleo because you just need as many in play as possible. You want to see at least one Pyroar. That's why he runs the thick 4-4 line. Absolutely. So we do see a fairly strong first turn. He does get the double colors down onto the Litleo on the bench. He opted to start off with that Charizard, knowing that he was going second, knowing that his Litleo may be in danger turn two. So let's just put up that big 180 HP Charizard, not as likely to get knocked out. Right, he's certainly happy with absorbing a blow there. We do see the float stone, so it seems like Brandon actually does have a lot of his switch options present right now. But looking at his hand, I saw a Juniper. If that's his only supporter, he actually might have to dump the switch. Two oh, switch. Ooh, that could be a very big deal here. Oh, right. and we do see it. Those two switch looking at us right now from the discard pile. Well, but he does get that float stone onto Trubbish. I think that's more important than the switch. That will allow him to activate Garbodor's Garbotoxin if he does get that into play. Of course. Oh, and it's in his hand. And there it is. So when Garbodor has a Pokemon tool attached to it, Garbotoxin takes away all other abilities in play, most namely Pyroar's Intimidating Main. So that will allow all of his basic Pokemon to hit Pyroar. Right. We have not seen a Pyroar yet, but with Intimidating, play, intimidating Main, it just stops most Pokemon in the format right now. Only evolved Pokemon can hit him or using an attack that can get through normal conditions. There aren't any Pokemon like that in Brandon's side, so he would really just be left to the Raichu alone or setting up this Garbotoxin ability. Great start for Brandon. Right. If you're Pram here, your number one priority is going after that Garbodor, taking that out of play so you can get rid of your opponent's option to attack with those big basic Pokemon. If it just comes down to a battle between Pyroar and Raichu, there's only two Raichu in Brandon's deck, so it's very likely he'll run out of attackers and eventually Pram will win that War of Attrition. So Pram has opted to use the Lysander to just get that free pull-up. He doesn't need to flip with the catcher here, and he's bringing up the Mewtwo. I'm sure he noted those two switch for discarded. If eventually Brandon does run out of enough of his switching cards, uh, he can just pull up and stall here while he tries to set up at least some kind of attacker. Yeah, that was a pretty intelligent play, but there we do see Oof. a Lysander from Brandon that's going to bring out that Pyroar, and again with that Garbotoxin, he will be able to attack it with Mewtwo EX, X-Ball doing 80 damage, and one Pyroar already going down. Right. It is just a shame to see you've got a Pokemon that's designed around blocking basic Pokemon, and you get knocked out by a basic Pokemon because your ability is shut down. Yeah, it's one big pile of garbage. That's what's keeping you <laughs> away from being protected. So we see he opts for the switch here, definitely wanting to protect those Lit Leos. Oh, wait, switch back. He needs to go for the Pyro and attack, probably. Yeah, he's going for the bicycle for three cards. We do see that Pokemon catcher, and it is a oh, heads. This could be huge. Pulling up the Garbodor. He's definitely going to need to find, <laughs> rolling up his sleeves. He knows this is going to be huge. Seven cards. He needs to find a, a Pyro and, and a Muscle, a muscle band. band in order to knock out computer this Garbodor here. Oh, Ultra Ball, that's it. The Ultra Ball can get him the Pyro. The Computer Search fist. can get him the Muscle Band. He knows he drew exactly what he needed to draw here. An Ultra Ball will find him the Pyro. Computer Search for the Muscle Band. And he'll actually be left with a card for next turn. But the big thing here is that Garbodor will go down this turn. And that's going to make Brandon... You know, kind of go back to the drawing board. He needs to find Raichu or find another Trubbish as quickly as possible. Right. This immediately becomes Raichu or Bust. Now I do see the double colorless energy in his hand, so he can power it up in one turn. It's just going to be whether or not he can find the search to get Raichu out and take down Pyroar, who is blocking with Intimidating Main all basic Pokemon on Brandon's side of the field. An incredible turn for Pramalot here. He will get the knockout on that Garbodor. We do see go to the discard pile. There are some other problematic cards that Brandon can run, though. Like we said earlier, that Hypnotoxic Laser could be a problem. And he also runs one copy of Enhanced Hammer. So if he can draw into that, he could discard that double colorless energy off of the Pyro. That could be a big problem, too. And real quick, you were mentioning that Hypnotoxic Laser. We just saw him hit into his stadium, Verbing City Gym. That is going to enhance any poison if he does happen to find it through the laser. Right, that's one way to deal with it. And there we see that double colorless onto Pikachu. So it looks like he is going to be trying to find that Raichu this turn. If he can manage to knock out Pyro this turn, he'll be at a huge advantage. Oh, Raichu right off the first bicycle card. Wow. So he's got the Raichu, the double, the full bench, the muscle band. Definitely not what Pramalot wanted to see. Now he does need one more bench Pokemon here, so he'll need to draw one here off of this Juniper. Four, five, or he could draw that Hypnotoxic six, Laser. Also seven. works. Let's did he miss both? Or did he have the laser? He's oh, got the laser. Oh, there's the laser. So that will be just enough for Raichu to knock that out. Circle Circuit for 100 damage, and then the finishing damage from that Hypnotoxic Laser. A huge response here from Brandon, and now Pram's just left with a Charizard. Definitely hurts. Now Charizard can be fueled very quickly with cards like Blacksmith, which from what happened to draw here, but you can't just use Charizard. Uh, eventually, he's going to get overwhelmed because Brandon has so many energy in play. His deck is entirely focused around just getting a Pyro out and locking. Absolutely. And 
if he can't get more lit Leos in the bench, it's not really going to work out. It seems like he's just opting to use the Charizard as the wall. He has the Blacksmith, but it's just not worth the risk. He needs to hope maybe by shuffling Brandon's hand down to four with this N that he can at least get some kind of advantage out of his five cards. Hopefully another lit Leo. Right, he knows, he knows attacking with Charizard here is not a good option. That Mewtwo EX is waiting on the bench, ready to X-Ball, and he needs to find a Litleo here oh, just to get something going. Nothing immediate, but we do have his favorite card, Roller Skates. <laughs> here come the flips. And here we go, Tails. Tails. If heads, he would have drawn three cards there, so a high-risk, high-reward kind of card. Oh, bicycle for two, it's just double Juniper. He's already played a supporter for his turn, so it's not a card he wants to see. This is not going well for Pram in this game. He may just have to end his turn with that Tropical Beach, and this may give Brandon a turn to win the game uh, right here. Of course, it's the Lit Leo is the first card he draws off that Tropical Beach. And there it is, a yep. full bench, a Hypnotoxic Laser. The Circle Circuit will finish off Charizard EX, and Brandon Salazar takes game number one. Just like that, Brandon is one game away from taking this national championship title, stealing it from Michael Premont, who has worked so hard for so many years. I can only imagine the nerves going through him right now. Absolutely. I mean, he's been in this situation plenty of times. I doubt that the nerves will really get to him. He's played in just tons and tons of tournaments. He's been in the finals countless times. So he knows it's just one game. It went poorly, but he can win the next two and still take down this national championship. Certainly helping him out, I'm sure, is the ability to go first. That way, uh, Brandon can't get that turn to uh, Garbodor as quickly in the game state. That was really crucial. And while he was able to get the knockout eventually, it just put him so far behind after all the other knockouts and his other lit Leos that it became rough. Right, I mean, that was pretty much a perfect start for Brandon. He got that Garbodor out immediately. He got to Lysander, that first Pyro on the bench, take it down. The next one went down to Raichu. And hey, sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes it is. So what do you think is going to change this matchup? What could Pramawa do differently, or what could happen differently in the game that would give him a chance to tie up this match and make it to game three? I think, like you said, going first is a big advantage. Being able to evolve his Pokemon first is really the difference maker. If he can evolve that Pyro turn two, and maybe play a Pokemon catcher, take out Trubbish before it evolves, that could be the difference between winning and losing. And overall, we saw Primwatt's deck was working. He did find a way to pull up that Garbodor, knock it out off a very crucial draw. He found his way into both the Muscle Band and the Evolution, but Brandon just runs a lot of counters. If he didn't run the Raichu, this would be a completely different game. But with it, it gets a bit tougher. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Brandon just has so many options. It feels like if he gets everything he needs to, he may be the favorite here. But Pram's deck may be a little more consistent than maybe the edge he needs. Both players shuffling up there, getting ready. We are about to begin game two. It is best two out of three. Right now, Brandon Salazar holds one game over Michael Pram Watt zero, and we are almost underway. At this point, Pram has to be maybe a little nervous, but he has to know. He's played this matchup a few times. He knows exactly what he has to do. You saw him in the first game go right for that Garbodor. He knows that's priority number one, and then if he can deal with Raichu after that, he can just clear the board with that Pyroar. It's just a matter of pulling it off. So here we go. Both players now looking at their opening hand, and Brandon certainly has to be happy to see that opening Landris EX. It's just great for applying early pressure, but uh, he does not have another basic ready, I believe, this time uh, to get that very early Garbodor or Raichu. He does, however, have a mulligan. Uh, like we said earlier, Michael Premont's deck just running six basic Pokemon, so it can go many, many mulligans before he finds the first one. And for each of those, Brandon gets another card and another chance at drawing some of these complicated combos. Absolutely. So we'll have to see if Bram can find a basic in this opening hand. I think in this situation, he would prefer to start off with that Litleo this time. Because when you go first with a Litleo that threatens that turn two Pyro, it's very difficult to do 70 damage on the first turn. Brandon would need a whole lot of cards to do that. So. <laughs> Muscle Band, uh, Hypnotoxic Laser, Verbake City Gym, yeah. and the Fighting Energy. I mean, it's certainly possible, but not ideal. But here, once again, we see another Mulligan. That's a two on top of his deck. Players use it to keep track of how many cards they can draw from these Mulligans. Two cards can be a pretty big deal starting the game off. Absolutely, especially for Brandon. He needs a lot of cards to get that Garbodor going. He needs those basic Pokemon out, the Trubbish and the Pikachu right away so he can get ready to evolve. So every card that he gets is just a little bit more of an advantage. Now, I talked with Prem earlier, and he said sometimes he does get in this situation where his opponent gets to draw a ton of cards to begin the game through these mulligans. But if he can hit one of his just two copies of uh, N, he can just shuffle his hand back in, force him to draw six. Normally, that would be a lot of cards to start. But if you're starting the game with multiple mulligan draws, oh, and there's number three, uh, it can be nice to shut them back down to six. Well, let's see how many mulligans we get here. We may set a record for most mulligans on stream here. I think three <laughs> is already the record. Well, if someone's going to do it, it would certainly be Pramawat. <laughs> Six basic Pokemon is one of the least I've seen in a competitive tournament deck in a long time. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's pretty crazy to see. So we'll have to have him shuffle up one more time. Again, can't stress enough that importance of getting Pyroar out very quickly. It's really just a battle using that Scorching Fang to knock out Trubbish or Pikachu before they evolve. And if they do evolve, you just need more Pyroar. You need to get that army going and eventually wear them down. So here we go. He's dealing out another seven cards. Can he find a basic? He definitely... Uh-oh. 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 Uh Number four. <laughs> Uh, this, this time, at least, he's going consistently. Uh, all trainer cards. Well, yeah. uh, lots of roller skates and bicycles, so at least he can get where he wants to be. <laughs> lots, of, lots of transportation, but it uh, doesn't matter if you can't start the car. I guess so. <laughs> so once again, we will see him shuffle his deck. We'll see Brandon cut, and then Bram will draw another hand of seven for the fifth time, and hopefully this time we see a basic Pokemon. I believe the most times Bram mulliganed this tournament was five, maybe six. So uh, certainly not a record he wants to break, but he is pushing it right now. Here come another seven. Can he find a basic one of six in the deck? This is very suspenseful. I've never seen an opening hand With, be so suspenseful. Oh, Charizard. All right, we're at least starting the game now. All right. <laughs> not what he wanted to see, like you said. Uh, Leo, probably the ideal starter. But hey, uh, at this point, maybe just be glad to start the game. Absolutely. So Brandon will get, what, four or five extra cards? I forgot how many he gets, but a lot of extra cards to start off with. I yeah, I believe it's the Quattro. And look at that. His hand is just massive. And so far, Pram does not have the N, but I can only imagine that off this roller skates, he'd be happy to find it. There one, two, three. Tropical Beach, another skates. Let's keep rolling for days. Another heads. One, <laughs> two, three. Now Pram's the one with an equally enormous hand. <laughs> eh, mulligan, schmulligan. Let's just play a bunch of roller skates. I'll draw as many <laughs> cards. So here we see the Ultra Ball. He has to discard two cards to use it, but he's got plenty in his hand to do. And certainly, he's going to be looking for that Lit Leo. Absolutely. That Ultra Ball discarding two fire energy is also very strong with that Blacksmith Supporter. Grabs two fire energy out of the discard pile and attaches them to one of your fire Pokemon. We see Dark Patch for acceleration for those dark decks, but fire types have Blacksmith. Right. Blacksmith, while being a supporter and not an item card, gets you two energy cards, and they don't even have to be restricted to the bench. So you can get yourself a whole lot. Uh, it's comparable, I would say, to the Dark Patch. Absolutely. We're seeing which Pokemon Pram wants to go with here. Looks like he's eyeing up Litleo. He also has a Mewtwo that he's thinking about, but it looks like Litleo is the Pokemon of choice. I think he's just trying to see what else can I play in my hand. He has another Ultra Ball. He has Juniper. He has Tropical Beach. He just has a ton of options thanks to those two roller skates. Right, and while he is discarding a lot of fire energy, that is kind of what you want in this early game setup. Uh, we didn't get to see any of his Blacksmith's last game because he just wasn't really able to get uh, resources while also having enough evolutions. But here, we certainly might see it. That new Flash Fire card certainly giving fire decks a little bit of life. Absolutely. So we do see the Ultra Ball here, and it looks like he's going for Mewtwo EX this time. He said he does play single copies of both Charizard EX and Mewtwo EX. I suppose he's just having that down to have a quick response to something. It's very good for knocking out Raichu, actually, and if we can get that out of the way, hey, maybe Pyroar can just do the rest. He's feeling Mewtwo by the double color synergy already, so he at least has a response if Raichu ever does show the light of day. Obviously, off this Juniper seems to be the support. Oh, nope. No need to. Uh, Tropical Beach, here we go. Filling your hand up to seven is not bad either. Yeah, he, he's getting to draw cards regardless. When you have a deck like this where you can sort of set up, uh, you get at least one turn to buffer. Using that Tropical Beach card, drawing your hand up to seven and ending your turn really isn't that big of a penalty. Ooh, we have a big play here already from Brandon and Lysander bringing out that Litleo. We do see the Burbank City Gym, and there's oh a fighting energy. Will we see all the cards necessary to knock out Litleo on the first oh, turn after all of those? Oh, millions. he has it all. Oh. The whole combo. What a ridiculous first turn here, bringing oh. out the Litleo and actually being able to knock it out on the first turn. And if I see correctly, he may also have an Enhanced Hammer if he wants to get rid of that Double Colors energy on the bench. Mewtwo EX as well, so just basically brutal. just neutralizing Pram's entire first turn. It's funny, before the game started, we sort of speculated, oh, he would need a lot of stuff to get this knockout with Landorus. But, you know, when you get to draw a four mulligan card, it can help you complete some of those combos. Absolutely. So we do see Level Ball for a Trubbish, a perfect start for Brandon so far. This is exactly what he's trying to do. Get that Trubbish on board to threaten that turn two Garbodor. Hey, man, what else can you really ask for? Yeah, I mean, the Enhanced Hammer, too. Oh. Oh. Graham shaking his head. He knows how strong of a first turn that is. He knows he's in a lot of trouble after that. He even has a Mewtwo for an easy counter if Pram decides to put up his Mewtwo in attack. Wow, so a knockout on the first turn with that Landorus EX. How is Pram going to respond to this one? Well, for one, uh, at least removing that heavy poison damage with another copy of his Tropical Beach. He's going to need a lot here. 
There's a Pokemon catcher, and I, did that go off the table? It went off our stream. <laughs> uh, well, I think that was a Tails. Looks like it. Uh, I think if he would have had the choice, he may have gone for that Trubbish right away, trying to knock it out with Mewtwo EX X Ball if he could find that double colorless energy. But here comes the Juniper. So he bicycled for one, just maybe speculating. Oh, is there something I could use here? But uh, really, he's just looking to mow through as much of his deck as possible. He needs to start thinking about both Pyroar and knocking out a potential Garbodor if it does show the light of day. Absolutely. So here's the level ball for that Litleo. I believe he has another one in hand as well. He needs to start getting multiples down. Since we do know Brandon does play those two Lysander, those have come up huge for him so far in this finals match. So we do see multiple Litleo. Certainly something that Prima maybe wanted to have to start this game. That way he could evolve one right now. But uh, until then, he sort of just has to do his best to set up, buffer with Mewtwo, and hope he can survive a little longer. Yeah, he's going to use that Tropical Beach to fill his hand up to seven once again, trying to get some more options because right now he just doesn't have anything going. Then again, Brandon may not either. He did have that first very strong turn, but after that, look, his hand is already down to about two cards, and yeah, he's actually going to have to use Tropical Beach as well. Yep, and this is one of those scenarios where sometimes when you run a supporter, it can help your opponent just as much as you. Now, typically, Brandon, that was sort of his turn. If he really wanted to capitalize, he can't even place damage counters on the board because you can't attack if you Tropical Beach. So, certainly not bad for Pramalot. Uh, it could have been worse. Yeah, and he does get that Pyroar down onto the bench. And he's going to play the end here, so we'll shuffle in and draw six cards. Brandon will go back down to five. And is a great card after your opponent uses Tropical Beach, shuffles in their seven card hand and makes them draw less. Right. And while five is still a decent hand size, it's certainly a lot worse than seven. Uh, definitely increases the chances that Brandon might miss a supporter or another crucial card. He's definitely looking for any piece he can to get that Garbodor out. Looking at his hand so far, no immediate supporter. Professor's left. No supporter off well, those five. So that was a pretty big end. Not bad. All right. So let's see. Will Pram decide to just power up one Pyroar here, or will he separate the energy out? Looks like he is just spreading his energy out, saying, you know what? I'm just going to wait here. We're going to power up multiple Pyroar. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to start going after that Garbodor, start going after that Raichu, and we'll see if I can come out on top. Now, right now, oh, he just drew it. I was going to say he's going to want to move that Mewtwo EX eventually, but uh, just off his draws, he did find a way into one of his four Switch cards. Yeah. Now, my concern at this point is the number of Pokemon EX Pram has on board. His strategy is going to be use Pyroar to wall those basic Pokemon. And if he takes out the Garbodor, takes out the Raichu, he could just be left with those Pokemon EX. But he'll still have some Pokemon that Brandon can knock out sitting on his bench. The Charizard, the Mewtwo, those can all be picked off by a Lysander or even Landorus EX's Hammerhead. So that's a big concern heading forward. Right. It's definitely not the perfect scenario for him. Obviously, he had to start the Charizard. He opted him for the Mewtwo as sort of an easy counter if Raichu ever does rear his head, but uh, overall, he's at least got Pyroars, he's got energies, uh, he can't be shut down immediately yet, he's not going to go down without a fight. Right, so we did see Brandon actually play the Skyla there for Professor Juniper, did he top deck that for the turn, the Skyla? Um, you know, I, I didn't see a supporter when he open, openly drew his cards, uh, it sometimes is tough at the angle, but yeah, I, I think he did. Wow, so an incredible draw for Brandon there. He's going to Ultra Ball for that Garbodor. He doesn't have a Pokemon tool quite yet, so Garbotoxin is not in effect. Intimidating main still functioning on Pyroar, but that is a threat. If it ever gets a Pokemon tool, all of a sudden, Landorus EX and Mewtwo EX can start hurting Pyroar. You know, uh, I think I might have missed something because I do see Juniper in his hand as well. So maybe he did have the Skyla and it was just tough the way he drew his cards. Uh, he played the Skyla for oh, the Oh, Skyla for Juniper. Sorry, I thought he Skyla for the Ultra Ball. So he always had the Ultra Ball, but... Uh, it looks like he's struggling to figure out where to put this energy for the turn. He's going to put it on that Pikachu just to make it a little easier to use Circle Circuit in the future, but another very strong Hammerhead. 50 damage with that Muscle Band, and then 30 from the Verbank and the Poison. And he's going to hit a Bench Pokemon for 30. Right, and you can tell he already knows. He needs to start piling damage onto that Charizard EX of the Bench. Those are his valid targets uh, until he can shut off uh, Intimidating Main. So he's just trying to apply as much pressure as he can. Now, those two cards, they'll give up four prizes combined as two EXs. He does have five to go. So ultimately, he's going to need a Raichu or a Garbodor if he wants to take out one of these Pyroar. Right, so we do see a switch coming here for Pramalot. He does have the double Colas, so he will be able to attack with Pyroar. And here is an N as well. Brandon only had one card in his hand, but Pram knows it was a Professor Juniper, so he's going to get a fresh hand anyway. Let's play that N and force you to draw that Juniper once again. Right, and we've seen last time he ended to five, uh, he did put him to a not that good of a hand, so we'll see if it happens again. I can only imagine he's looking right now for a Pokemon catcher, maybe a muscle band, knock out that Garbodor, uh, shut down that option immediately. We'll see what he gets. Yeah, that would be his ideal turn here. There's the oh, Pokemon catcher. catcher. Uh, 
but no muscle band. So that Garbodor looks like he's safe for now. Ram may just attack the active lander's EX with that Scorching Fang and just be content with that. You know, it's not always that bad of an option, despite the fact that you have to discard an energy to deal 90 damage, which is not a very efficient attack in the Pokemon trading card game. When you have enough walls, uh, 92 times twice, that can at least knock out the Landorus. Right, so he is going to discard that fire energy, do the additional 30 damage with Scorching Fang. Now it's in range for a knockout next turn. So Brandon draws. I didn't see a supporter initially, but he does have computer search, so he can get one if he wants it. Right, so well, the main thing here is, will that Pyroar survive the turn? Will we see a Pokemon tool go on to Garbodor? Yep. Even if it does, though, how is Brandon going to knock out Pyro? Landorus EX can't do enough damage, so he may need some kind of switch to get a Mewtwo EX active or possibly even Raichu to finish off that Pyro. Right. He certainly has uh, enough chances to do it. He's got the double colorless energy. He's got the computer search for anything he wants, but he's going to have to extend a little bit if he wants to knock out that Pyro this turn versus simply setting up. Absolutely. We do see... Well, he's struggling to find out what order he should do this in. He has the computer search and he has the bicycle. Which cards does he want to discard? Which cards is he going to keep? Looks like he's going to computer search first and then probably play out all of his cards and go for that big bicycle for four cards, trying to get the knockout this turn. Yep. Mewtwo and double color synergy hit the discard. Uh, well, helpful card, certainly not something that he needs immediately yet. Uh, he's already got a Mewtwo. He has another double in his hand. So uh, just getting rid of the redundancies that he can draw. Oh, there's that Pokemon tool. Garbotoxin is activated. Okay, we do have that floatstone. Here's the bicycle. If he can draw the switch here, that Pyro will go down. Looks like he does draw a Professor Juniper, though. That can draw him seven more cards. Right as the fourth card, too. Uh, as he was drawing, it almost looked like he had a pretty unplayable hand, but it seems he has just opted to hammerhead here, uh, deal the poison damage, deal 30 to the other Pyro while he can. Garbotoxin is active, and that's his turn. Now, that's also a very strong turn because of that poison damage. There's a Pokemon catcher, though. Huge oh. heads. Garbodor will come out, and Pram actually drew the muscle band for the turn, so <laughs> he'll actually get the knockout on that Garbodor, and this will be a major swing in this game. Sure, he definitely would have wanted to have all of that together last turn, but, you know, uh, at least he has it now. He also has Blacksmith, so he can fuel an easy two fire energy from the discard pile to one of his Pokemon. Ops for the Charizard EX, probably going to go for a really big attack to close out with him. But until then, uh, Pyroar just holding on here in the active spot. Yeah, it looks like with that Muscle Band, Scorching Fang will do 110 damage, but it will be yep. knocked out from the Poison and the Burbank City Gym. So we have a one-for-one -one prize trade, but Michael Paramo does get rid of that Garbotoxin, and that allows him to have his Pyro up there once again, safe and sound. Right. Oh, he, he almost uh, looked like he had uh, two prize cards by knocking out the Garbodor, uh, one of the few uh, non-EXs that Brandon runs. All right, we have a bit of a dispute there. Pram is saying, you know what? Um, I got knocked out by Poison, so my knockout happened first. He has to promote a Pokemon first, and then I'll decide what I want to promote. It's actually the correct order of things because Poison knocked him out. Well, an attack knocked out Brandon's Pokemon, so he'll be forced to promote first, and then Pram will have to promote his. Correct. Uh, one was through the attack. The other one was between turns. So, right. Well, it does give him a, a little bit of power here. Uh, he really has to hope that, that Raichu does not see the light of day, and I can already see an Ultra Ball peeking out from Brandon's hand. This is not a pretty situation. No matter which Pokemon Pram decides to promote here, it's not going to be good. Hesitant. UTX already has 80 damage on it. Charizard has 60 on it. Both of those are easy targets for Brandon's Mewtwo EX. And after he takes a knockout on this Pokemon EX, it's just one more knockout on the other Pokemon EX, and the game is over. Right. It's just like you were saying earlier. While he does run just two EX Pokemon in the deck, he usually doesn't want both of them down if he can't protect them. Uh, Mewtwo EX looks like it is going to fall this turn, and he's just going to have to pray with Pyroar that it can just remain blocking for the rest of the game. If for any reason Brandon can find his way into a Lysander, pull up that Charizard EX, there's two prizes on Mewtwo, two prizes on Charizard, GG. Right, so we do see him Ultra Ball for another Pikachu here. He does have that Professor Juniper in his hand, so Brandon just seems to have almost unlimited options at this point, always seeming to draw exactly what he needs. And even he doesn't even need to play it this turn. He can just X-Ball for 120 damage, get that knockout, since the opposing Mewtwo EX is weak to Psychic, going down to just two prizes. Yeah, definitely can't argue with uh, that result. Uh, we do see a double colorless energy on Charizard EX, so he is uh, looking mighty terrifying. So Charizard EX will be able to knock out Mewtwo EX in one hit with that Combustion Blast. You have the Muscle Band on there. He can knock it out, but this is extremely risky at this point. If Brandon can respond with another Mewtwo EX, X-Ball, that would be game over and national championship over. Right. He's also got Raichu evolving. Uh, maybe he can find a double, fill up the bench, get a muscle band. Uh, I'm not sure how well his draw is so far, but it's not out of the question. 
Yeah, definitely a risky maneuver, but at this point, Pram probably feels like he is so far behind, he needs to start taking chances, and that was just one risk he needed to take. Let's get rid of the Mewtwo, hopefully we survive the turn, and then Pyro can clean up from there. Now, did that Trubbish hit the bench this turn, I believe? Yes, and I think he may have had to discard his other Garbodor. Uh, at some point, we'll have to see if that comes up. We do see the Hypnotoxic Laser. So Yet if, another. If Raichu gets powered up here, we can just see a circle circuit, and the National oh, Championship will Juniper, be over. He's looking for double colorless. Draws the he's looking for any. Oh, there, there it is. It. It's over. Is this it? There it is, the double colorless energy. Circle circuit's doing 80 Wait. damage right now. He does he's need another bench Pokemon first, or a muscle band. That will do it as well. Oh, I can't tell if there is a muscle band. He's carefully doing the math just to make sure. Um, oh, did, did he announce that attack? I'm not sure. I think he may have done it. He oh, my goodness. Attack. Charizard EX will survive just barely with 10 HP. Wow. you got to wonder, will it matter with the Landers EX sitting on the bench anyway? Right. It, while Brandon is certainly <laughs> shaking his head, he had the national championships in his <laughs> grasp. The muscle band's right there. Oh, face palming. However, like you said, Landers is just one hammerhead away. He really has an option for anything that Premawad does. Um, if Pyrogor's active and knocks out the Landorus, uh, he's got the Raichu, he's got another Landorus. It's rough, but uh, for now, Premawad can cling to hope. Let's yeah. see what he does. Pram's going to try to go for a big turn here. If he can catch with that Landorus EX that has the fighting energy on it, there it is, there's the heads. Oh boy. He can bring out that Landorus EX. If he can knock it out with Pyroar, and then maybe end Brandon down to a low hand size. No, he's just going to go with the Blacksmith. But if Brandon doesn't have a fighting energy, he may not be able to hammerhead, and Pram may steal a game here. And I did not see a fighting energy in his hand. It could be incorrect. I know he's gone through several. He's even used it to retreat Pikachu earlier. So uh, without a fighting, he cannot clear that Charizard DX in the bench. It is going to be intense. Absolutely. Uh, definitely a strange turn of events here, making it very exciting here in the finals. There's the scorching thing. Pram goes down to one prize, but there's the oh, Lysander. Oh, is already there. And Brandon Salazar is your new U.S. national champion of the Masters division, defeating Michael Pramalot in two straight games, the first year Masters player getting it done. Pretty crazy to see such a new face take on a veteran to this game. He's just been so consistent, so strong over the years. Unfortunately for Pramawat, it seems like Brandon's deck was really tooled to counter these Pyroar decks. That was one thing Brandon was talking to us about yesterday. And ultimately, it seemed he had enough responses to get through the Pyroar wall. Absolutely. That Garbodor Garbotoxin just taking away Pyroar what it does best blocking those basic Pokemon, and then the Raichu coming in to clean up just seems like too much. You know, you can deal with a Garbodor, you can deal with a Raichu when you're using Pyroar, but both, that's when it gets very tricky. And it's really interesting. You look at uh, some of the Darkness decks, a lot of them don't opt to go both. You usually can fit one or the other. Maybe Raichu, uh, maybe Garbodor. Which decks do you want to counter? But Brandon, he said, I want it all. Uh, and so he decided to opt for a little lighter line, the fighting Pokemon instead of the Dark, that need a lot of different item cards to fuel them, and it definitely paid off. Yeah, just like in the senior division where we saw kind of an unusual deck come through and win the U.S. National Championship in Masters, this Landers Mewtwo deck seemed kind of outdated, but Brandon shows us, no, it's still as strong as ever. All right, we're going to go to the stage right now and congratulate our national champion. All right, let's give a huge round of applause to your 2014 TCG Masters Division champion, Brandon Salazar. Put the trophy up, Brandon. All right, one quick question for you before you go on for your interview. This was your uh, first year in Masters, correct? Yeah, yes. So was there an intimidation factor that you needed to get past earlier in the weekend, or were you pretty confident all the way through? Yeah, I was pretty scared throughout the whole weekend, man. A lot. Um, I faced really good people. I had a really good game in the finals, and yeah, it was really a hard match for me. All right, well, congratulations. We will be seeing you in Washington, D.C. at the World Championships. Another round of applause for Brandon Salazar, folks. All right, thank you. Wow. Now, does that make Brandon Salazar the youngest Masters U.S. National Champion to date? It just might be, yeah. That uh, certainly is an accomplishment in itself. Uh, it's a shame that we didn't get to see a closer game. I know Mike Prema was just a few cards off here or there from getting those locks on. It's tough to run through so many counters, but it has been so great to be able to cast these matches and show them to you guys around the world. This competition is just so great to display. Absolutely, and we can't state enough how tough this tournament is. Over 800 players. Brandon is the one coming out on top. 
And it just goes to show anybody can just come in this game, pick it up. If you put in the time, put in the practice, you can compete with the best. Michael Pramod has been a top-tier competitor for 10 years now in this game. And Brandon comes in, a first-year Masters player, puts in the time, he comes out on top. Right. It's like you said, the game right now has one of the lowest learning curves that we've seen. So if you're at all interested in the Pokemon trading card game, I encourage you to go to Pokemon.com, check out a league near you, learn from some friends, and it really is a rewarding game. Yeah. Or you can actually go to Pokemon TCG Online. It's a great way to learn how to play the game as well. It's a free game online. You can go ahead and download it. And hey, get started in the Pokemon TCG. Huge fan. All right, we've got Brendan coming up soon. I want to congratulate him on his national championships, and we'll see you guys very quickly. Hey, Pokemon fans, I am here with your new Masters national champion, Brandon Salazar. How does it feel to be potentially the youngest Masters national champion in the U.S. so far? Oh, it feels amazing, man. <laughs> Were you intimidated at all by Michael Pramowat, considering he's been around the game so long? Yeah, I, I feared a little bit, but when I saw I was playing Pyro, I just kind of went what I knew about the matchup and just played it right. Now, I know you were talking yesterday. You said that you really tooled your deck to counter those Pyroars. How yeah. many Pyroars had you faced over this national championships? Um, I faced two day two, and then I faced one in top eight, which was stream, and then I faced one in the finals, so four Pyroar. Yep. Seems like you had a pretty good answer to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah being able to fit both the Raichu and the Garbodor just, just seems like it spells doom for Pyroar. Yeah. So you're now the U.S. national champion. What are you going to do to prepare for Worlds? Um, <laughs> um, I'm just going to play the same deck and just, <laughs> what, just play my best at Worlds, and I hopefully will win Worlds too. Looks like you already got yourself a pretty big fan club. See a lot of your friends and family <laughs> cheering for your area. <laughs> it's got to be great to have that kind of support. Yeah. Well, Hopefully, Brandon, we see you a lot more at the National Championships for Thanks. Masters. You've got plenty of years for the rest of your life. You yeah. can come back and compete. But uh, not a bad way to start for your first year in this division. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to kick it to the VGC pretty soon.